Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Living Life, a life you. I am your host, Dr. Veronica Garcia, and today I am joined by Mr. Redmond Keenan. And hi, welcome. Thanks for having me. It's such an honor and a pleasure because he is a high vibration student of the university. So thank you for spending a little bit of your time with us and sharing your beautiful vibrations and energies over here. So let's get to it. For sure. Talk to me, Redmond. What what quarter are you in? in the I'm in uh, fourth quarter. Fourth quarter of the chiropractic program. Of the chiropractic program. Of the chiropractic program. Yes. Um, which means that you've only been here for about a year. Yes, a, a little less than a year, actually. A little less than a year. Yeah. How's it been? It's been pretty great. I mean, I've, I've loved my almost three quarters year and mm -hmm. it's been really different because I'm from Canada. Mm. So it's been a kind of a big uh, move. Uh, I drove down here, which oh. was really nice, yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness, tell me uh, if it stopped. I kind of stopped for food and gas. Okay, wow. That's it, that's it just... though. Yeah, kind of just straight straight ahead. But it's been really good. I really like to keep, my favorite part about life is the community. Mm -hmm. I feel like, especially in a lot of professional programs, it's a lot of cutthroat stuff, like in dental school, medical school, medical school it's always a about a competition. Mm -hmm. But here in life, it's everybody that wants to see you succeed. Mm. And it's just really great, really supportive. Everybody wants to mm -hmm. lend a hand or like, you know, ask how you're doing. So I really mm -hmm. like that vibe of, of life you so far. Mm -hmm. I love that. It, it, it truly speaks volumes. I love the speech tradition that we have, mm -hmm. which is you, just, you see someone, just say hi, anything. Exactly, just connect yeah. with that person. And mm -hmm. I love that it is a tradition in the institution. And if you have the opportunity, um, wh whoever's listening in, to just be on campus, you'll see it through campus, mm -hmm. speak tradition as, as an encouragement. So it's really beautiful to see. Um, so you are from Canada. How was the transition, um, just being an international student, kind of coming to uh, the United States and kind of going through that process of being in a doctorate program, how's that been for you? I think I've transitioned pretty well. Mm -hmm. I mean, Canada is not too, too different from the US. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of uh, the same uh, societal norms. Mm -hmm. There are a few different things, mm -hmm. uh, but all in all, I really, it's been pretty seamless, except for the weather, which is probably the biggest part. <laughs> I never experienced this, this much uh, humidity before, but I like that there's no snow, and I like that it's kind of like basically summer all year, yeah. and you can, you know, learn outside, study outside whenever you want, mm -hmm. and, uh, I, but I've heard it gets worse in August, so waiting for that one. <laughs> <laughs> Just hold tight. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, you're good. Uh, I'm sure you're going to survive. Yeah, Just yeah. a lot of sunblock. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, but... Tell me a little bit about what has been your experience in the chiropractic program. What areas have you been involved in mm. outside of the classroom that have kind of propelled you to, to continuing with that satisfaction? Yeah, for sure. I definitely think that uh, burnout's a huge thing yeah. for students. And a lot of people get into chiropractic because they have a reason, they have a why. Mm -hmm. And that kind of drives them to go to school in the first place. Yeah. And I feel like a lot of people can lose sight of that, especially with the classes. You know, we're taking nine, 10 classes with labs, so it kind of feels like you're taking 15 classes at a time. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's a lot of work. And I really think that clubs and, you know, extracurriculars are a really big thing, kind of like driving and instilling the why, why you're actually here. Yeah. So personally, I've been, I, I've got into like a few adjusting clubs. Uh, the main ones I've done are Gonstead, uh, Thompson, and a bit of MLS. And then I'm also uh, the prime, the, not prime minister, <laughs> the president of uh, a level up club here on campus, mentorship club. Yeah. So that's been pretty good. Yeah. I think it's just really good because we talk about a lot of things that are geared towards uh, chiropractic and a little more practical per se than the basic science you learn in your first few uh, quarters here. Mm -hmm. So it kind of just really uh, instills like the reason why you're a chiropractor mm -hmm. and it even instills like, okay, I get what I'm doing in school, like there's a lot of good a lot of information, but how do I apply that into my future practice? Yeah. And how do I communicate the value of chiropractic, which is like the main thing we do at our club at Level Up? Okay, so communicating chiropractic. Mm -hmm. I, as, as an alumni of the university, I know that we are so well shaped into understanding all the science and all mm -hmm. the intricacies and all the names and yeah. everything in between. But I do think it's a beautiful, art and it takes practice mm -hmm. to be able to break all those terms down mm -hmm. and communicate what chiropractic is. So what yeah. do you think has been like the top three just um, ideas that you've gotten from level up that you would love for other students to also experience? Yeah, for sure. Uh, one of the level up uh, docs, his mm -hmm. name is Dr. Ryan Carlson. He said this at a seminar one time and it always stuck with me. But when you're in practice, you actually wear three hats. Mm -hmm. Uh, the first and this in the order, same order too. Uh, first is you're a marketer, you know, 
you can't get patients to the door if you don't market yourself. Yeah. And then second, you're a businessman. Mm -hmm. you, know, you can't keep the doors open if you don't know how to uh, handle your finances. Mm -hmm. And lastly, and only then are you a chiropractor. Mm -hmm. Because once you have your business, once you have your patients, then you can actually adjust and change lives. But mm -hmm. the reason why a lot of chiropractic uh, businesses fail when they first open up in the first five years is because they don't have the first two down pat. Mm -hmm. you know, chiropractic always works and adjustments are amazing and they change lives. Mm -hmm. But it's just the first two things that a lot of people struggle with, which holds them back from being successful in practice. Mm -hmm. That's important. I love that. And and as a business owner that has a, her own practice, have had it since 2020, mm -hmm. I definitely understand and can resonate with that. It's yeah, yeah. such an important piece mm -hmm. because, again, like you said, if you don't have the business, if you don't have the doors, mm -hmm. you nobody's going to come in. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> or you can't be a chiropractor. Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> um, tell me, you also mentioned that you've been involved in other technique clubs as well. What is, what have, over the last four, four three quarters, three quarters in a few yeah. weeks. Three, three weeks, yeah. <laughs> over the last three quarters in a few weeks, what have you seen in the clubs that has actually helped you in the classroom to kind of be successful in there as well? Yeah, definitely. Uh, there's some of the clubs I went to, uh, like Gon said, is very good foundationally because mm -hmm. a lot of the listings we use in class are originate from Gonstead. Mm -hmm. So uh, using clubs in conjunction with school definitely helps you excel better because mm -hmm. you know, you're know you learning in school on paper, but then to actually see the listing and the setup on the listing and to see what you're actually moving and it kind of puts two and two together and makes like the experience better. Like, oh, well, this is what I'm going to be doing the rest of my life. And, you know, kind of makes it more real versus when you're just looking at it in the classroom, you know, it's kind of, it seems far away. It doesn't seem like, oh, but when you actually put two and two together, it like it just like kind of a wow in your brain. Like, oh, this is amazing. Light bulb. Yeah, light bulb. Yeah, <laughs> light bulb. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. What is what is your goal? What where where do you see yourself? Um, where do you see yourself in a year and a half? Which mm -hmm. means that you're still kind of in the university. <laughs> yeah. And then where do you see yourself in five years? That's a good question. Well, in a year and a half, uh, hopefully I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. In a year and a half, I definitely just want to continue to see, see myself grow as a as a adult and as a as a chiro future chiropractor. Mm -hmm. I really want to, you know, there's always room for improvement every time. Mm -hmm. I know uh, I just got the present role now, so definitely seeing my the club grow and grow would be one of my goals, and just to kind of reach more people because I know a lot of people do struggle with communication, especially when they get to clinic. Mm -hmm. You know, they're trying to get a lot, some out outpatient clinics, you mm -hmm. know, and they haven't really practiced that before. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to get kind of reach that population as well. And also just to not experience too much burnout in school. I want to still be fresh, as fresh as I am now, uh, earlier uh, in my chiropractic career. I still want to have those legs. So when I do graduate that I can, you know, hit the ground running still and not feel too burnt out from all the school. Yeah. And then uh, I guess for the next five years, I'm de I kind of see myself as an opportunist. Mm -hmm. You know, I definitely want to work here for a little bit first mm -hmm. before I go back home to Canada. But really, wherever the best opportunity is, wherever I can learn the best, where have the best mentor, I mm -hmm. kind of prioritize that more than per se a location mm -hmm. or a specific uh, practice anywhere. So I just really want to learn from the best and so I can, you know, become the best chiropractor I possibly can be. That's awesome. I think that not many individuals, uh, when they are in the fourth quarter, have seen the importance of mentor, but you've brought it up now a few times in this conversation. Mm -hmm. Tell me about what does it mean to have a mentor to you and why is that important? Yeah, honestly, it was kind of strange to me because when I, before I got into school, I was a CA, mm -hmm. uh, had an internship. I didn't even know what chiropractic was. And then he was telling me that, oh yeah, uh, we're gonna we do meetings with our coach every bi-weekly to check in. I'm like, coach, like, what do you mean coach? Like, like for a sport? Like, no, mm -hmm. like a chiropractic coach. And I first got introduced to that and then he was saying, you know, all these athletes, they train, they have coaches mm -hmm. and they tell them uh, they're there for them, the good and the bad. They have the discernment to tell, to encourage them, but also to, you know, criticize them with love. Mm -hmm. And the same thing with chiropractic. I feel like there's a lot of ups and downs in practice from my experience. You're going to have a lot of highs. You're going to break through pace and patient numbers, but you're also going to have, when you only have like a few new patients mm -hmm. and just having that mentor in your back corner to support you and to who's already been there and experienced it all is just really important for your morale and so you can have a long uh, chiropractic career. Absolutely, mm -hmm. I, I couldn't agree more, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I Big shout out to my coach in chiropractic because <laughs> without you I wouldn't be anything. Yeah. Um, but I do think that it's a beautiful and, and really important thing. Tell me, you mentioned you were a CA before, which yes. means a chiropractic assistant. Yes. And you mentioned that you hadn't seen chiropractic before, so you didn't grow up in chiropractic. No, I didn't. Okay, so tell me about your chiropractic story. Yeah, definitely. So I always wanted to, you know, 
being a healthcare professional uh, since I was young, like my parents always pushed doctor, 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 this, doctor, that. And, but I always knew from a young age, I wanted to help people. Yeah. And I was already on that medical route. You know, I took my MCAT. I, I was basically taking pre-med courses in undergrad. And then after COVID, I really wanted to get my like feet wet. I wanted some experience, you know? Mm. So I uh, did this internship through my school and it so happened to be at a chiropractic office. And to be honest with you, I didn't really know it was. I just saw this guy named, uh, his name's Dr. Anthony Denoso back in Kingston, Ontario, Canada. And I was like, oh my goodness, like, okay, great experience. And I kind of fell in love with it. At first I started with the front desk and I just kind of watched patients come and go. But then I eventually did more practical stuff. I became like the tech CA. So I did some intake patient histories to help with like progress exams, stuff like that. Really cool stuff. Stuff I was honestly really blessed to experience. And not many people can say they did that. And then I just knew like, wow, this is what I want to do uh, for the rest of my life. It's so fulfilling. You know, I've had some bad tastes, uh, with the medical field before and you know my some of my uh, i've seen some of my friends even you know go down some like a, a bad route because of it and i knew i always wanted to go into something holistic and i really think the vitalism is super important mm -hmm. you know to living a long and healthy life and just knowing that the power in the body is what heals and what restores mm -hmm. i really love that aspect about chiropractic and you know putting the power back to the people rather than to the bottle or to the, the surgery mm -hmm. so i really thought that it was amazing and then Ever since that, I kind of looked for the best chiropractic school to go to. And I was choosing between, you know, CMCC, which is the only chiropractic school in Canada. Mm -hmm. I was looking at life and it kind of, if uh, you want to call it fade or, you know, right place, right time. But I just so happened to get invited to a seminar up north yeah. and just so happened to be Dr. LaMarche mm -hmm. speaking. And I already been accepted to life and I, I met him and I was like, oh, I heard you're from life. Yeah. He's like, and I'm like, I got accepted there. And then he was like, yeah, I know. I signed the paper. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then little did I know, I checked and there's his signature at the bottom. I'm like, wow, that's crazy. <laughs> and he's like, you know about life leadership? Duke? And I'm like, yeah, I do. Yeah. And I, I was kind of debating and going. He's like, yeah, you should go. And I, I kind of went to life leadership beacon and the rest is history. Yeah, wow. I fell in love with the school there. That's amazing. I love that. That's yeah. so cool. Such a such an opportunity to be able to experience the profession before experiencing the profession, right? <laughs> yeah. And to to know to know that this is your path because mm -hmm. you've already kind of lived it to an extent. Mm -hmm. Um so being a CA, tell me what's been if any, do you have a case that you guys seen or a patient that you guys saw um in your practice without disclosing anything, yeah, but right. about this story that you're like, "Wow, that that's yeah, it. That's, that's it." it. Yeah, uh, the story I always fall back to is when I was kind of maybe the first month or say, mm -hmm. and I honestly didn't know too much about chiropractic at all. But uh, there was an emer a, a sort of an emergency case. She walked in with a cane mm -hmm. and she, you know, didn't know what, what happened. She had no idea, you know, she just woke up one day walking with a cane. And my, the chiro my chiropractor, you know, gave her maybe two adjustments the same day. Mm -hmm. And then she walked out a second just without the cane, wow. which was insane. I'm like, what? What is this? And then, and then after later that day, she called him. Like, and she called uh, him in tears. Mm -hmm. Just experienced like the gratitude of like, thank you for so much because you don't know how debilitating it is because she had two kids, yeah, and she couldn't walk at all. You know, mm -hmm. it's just it's amazing. And that moment was my aha moment. Like, wow, this is this has to be something good. You know? mm -hmm. Wow, that's a that's such a beautiful thing to have in perspective. Mm -hmm. Now, like I said, uh, not many people get to experience those things so early on, and mm -hmm. it's nice that you have and you come in already seeing and touching and smelling and, and <laughs> yeah. hearing the the voice and the gratitude and the tears because when those things happen, which happen very often, mm -hmm. and people call them miracles, and we're here like I, your body is capable, yeah. <laughs> it, it it's capable. That's what that's what yeah, happened. Yeah. Um, but. When those things happen, it truly brings you back to that why, that how, mm -hmm. and continues igniting that that sense of inspiration, not necessarily motivation, which is an outward thing, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. but more of that inspiration to continue going in, in the profession. Because I will say, and I'll tell everybody, I'm like, yeah. the profession will test you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it will test your perseverance. It will test your passion. It will test your commitment to it. But it is those moments that allows you to kind of go back and ground yourself and go back mm -hmm. into reaching that community and to continue 
continue f- going forward and serving. Mm-hmm. So it's beautiful that you've watched that. It's, I'm so excited for <laughs> your journey ahead. Yeah. I'm excited that you are the president or prime minister, however you want to call it, <laughs> <laughs> of the Level Up Club yes. um, on campus, which also lets us know, hey, there's not just chiropractic technique clubs. There's also clubs for, mm-hmm. for business and there's clubs for nutrition and for um, just cultural clubs. There is yeah. a space for you to come in and just find your people. Exactly. Which is really cool. Yeah. 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 Well, what advice do you have for a new qu- for a first quarter student? First quarter students? Mm-hmm. I would definitely say for first quarter students, get involved really early. Mm-hmm. That was the advice that was given to me and it's definitely benefited me a lot. You know, you, you, people, people want to hold off on clothes because they want to see how they want to adjust to the chiropractic program. But the truth is that if you adjust now, like if you just now with school and with clubs, then you'll be far better suited when you get into with clinic and with clubs and with class later down the road. Yeah, I love that advice. Well, good luck. Good luck on the rest of your career. Good luck on the rest of your quarter. I'm sure you're going to be amazing. I'm excited to see you in clinic. It's just around the corner. It's just a year, just less than a year, actually. Yeah, exactly. It comes fast. (laughs) Come by really fast. It is a really cool journey to be a chiropractor at Life University and become one. Mm -hmm. But it's also a really cool experience just to be in Georgia and have a community of here. So welcome to Georgia. Welcome to Life University. I'm excited to see you around. Have a beautiful rest of your day. And we'll see you guys on the next episode of Living Life, a Life You. Take care. Bye.